was up 2.28 over the previous week. Now, uh, Trans Industries is still offering controlling stock. However, I'm not sure we should buy. Does that mean we should or we shouldn't? Well, it was just a matter of speaking. Should we buy or not? <sighs> no, Mr. Braddock, we shouldn't. Now then, uh, Alaskan Petroleum, we bought that at three and a half. It's up to four and a half. They're ceasing activity for the winter. You must do that to it in the forward lounge. The sound is very irritating. Shouldn't you tell him he's reading to himself? Tell him when we arrive, we should be there in 20 minutes. How many times have I told you if you see turbulence, go around it? It's not turbulent, sir. I was just about to advise you and the missus to fasten seat belts. Seems we have a little electrical trouble up here. I think it's a short. I don't want any explanations. Can it be fixed? I think so, sir. Then do it. Yes, sir. Do it. Someday. Someday I'm going to search that radar screen and I'm going to find me a hurricane. And I'm going to fly into it and give that old creep a ride he's never seen. <laughs> you spy on me like that, too? I don't have to, my dear. It's not your conversation that interests me. Sometimes I think you enjoy being disliked. Wanting to be liked is a disease in this country. <laughs> What's happening, sir? The whole electrical system seems to be malfunctioning. I have to try a fourth landing. Just finish it. Here, listen. Em? What's that? Oh, sure, glad to. Goodbye. Clock two and seven seconds. It's doing 85 when I passed it. 85 and seven, we did it, Ben. Yeah, but she's still overheating. She has a tendency to slide too much in the turns. We better get her in the garage. Oh, Joe! I gotta be at Sylvia's at 6 o'clock. She just called. Had a very important message for you. What'd you say? Pick up one can of tomato paste, 75 cents worth of Greek olives, and a loaf of Syrian bread. Syrian bread? Sicilian bread. I'll try Syrian bread first. Hey, maybe you ought to marry her already, so she stopped with these crazy dishes. And who wants her to stop? Come on, I'm in a hurry. You know what I heard, Ben? Old man Braddock might be coming to town for a big conference. 
Think he might come out here and take a look at her personally? I doubt it. To him were some numbers on a stock report. Yeah, <laughs> you're probably right. He's off buying Chicago now. I'll be downstairs. Call me if there's any change. Yes, Doctor. Doctor Pierce? To answer your question, Mrs. Braddock, he's going to die quite soon. Then why are you giving him blood? To add a few hours to his life. That's my job, keeping old people alive as long as possible. No chance for him? He wasn't badly hurt in the accident. It simply hastened what would have happened in a few weeks anyway. His body's falling apart. Nothing can save him. How sad. How terribly sad. How much will you inherit? Twenty-five million. And I'm worth all of it. see anything fascinating? Quiet. I'm satisfying a long suppressed impulse. I once tried to go through my father's wallet when I was a little girl. He took it away from me. Ever since then, I've had but one thought. I am a driven woman. I am not your father. Hmm. Well, nobody's perfect. I have a few impulses of my own needs to ask for. Is that all you're marrying me for? You mean besides the fact that you're uh, an incredible cook? Mm -hmm. Lovely, mm -hmm. bright, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. and that's right. Dirty old man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, is this a picture of your parents? Hmm. How long ago was this picture taken? Oh, about uh, 10 years ago. You know, you haven't changed much since then. Another brandy. How'd you guess? From the KBRD newsroom, a special bulletin regarding the condition of Jordan Braddock. His physician, Dr. Matthew Pierce, has reported that his condition has deteriorated sharply. He is given little chance to survive. Braddock was the lone passenger to be seriously injured when his private jet crash-landed outside the city a few hours ago. We will bring you more late bulletins as they are received. Have you ever seen him, Ben? No. Like everyone else in this town, I'm just a small fish in a big, ratic ocean.
anything like it. He pulled one hand free and tried to tear the tent. I tied him down again, and he slept quietly until about three quarters of an hour ago. Then he started acting up, and I called you. Will you get this thing out of my nose? Be quiet. Well, at least untie my hands. Will you be quiet, then? Yes, I'll be quiet. You can take that out. How do you feel? I feel good. A little sleepy. Well, get some sleep. I'm afraid I won't wake up. You'll wake up. I've been a nurse for 15 years, but I've never seen anything like this. It's a miracle, isn't it? I don't mind. But I do mind. You're keeping me from my patient, Mr. Locke. And you have your work, I have mine. Dr. Pierce is here in his usual nasty mood. We could do without the editorial. Pass him. I'm at that store, let them. You just keep buying up that stock. Yes, the price will go up soon enough when my recovery is announced. Which will be announced immediately. Hello, Doctor. Uh, Thomas, I want a full report on the plane. Still up to your old tricks. A billionaire's income in the mind of a thief. What are you so mad about? You've taken over this entire floor. Uh-huh. You had all those patients moved out. Do you realize how crowded this hospital is? I built it, I endowed it, I paid for it. I'm using it. How do you feel? Strange, Doctor, strange. Something is happening to me. I haven't felt this good in years. Doctor Pierce, what if I told you I'm getting younger? I'd say you're getting senile. Uh, no matter what you say, something is happening to me. I feel all lighted up inside. How did you do it? I did nothing. Wow. I looked in the mirror. I look younger. Come on, Pierce. Open your mouth. I have my suspicions. I'm not sure. I'm making some tests. Uh, uh, oh, I, uh, I told you the uh, truth. Uh, I'm a geriatrist. I deal with old age, not miracles. Uh, 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 uh. I understand, Doctor. I understand. You tried something new on me, and you didn't expect it. To I work did nothing. Well. Look up. Uh, well, whatever you did, I'm grateful. You'll see that. The check I sent you. Doctor, whatever it is you've discovered, I'd like to invest in it. <laughs> it's worth being. You've just had a reprieve from death, and all they can think about is making money from it. Uh, somebody <laughs> should. Why not me? Right, darling? You said he was going to die? I thought it was the truth. What am I supposed to do now? Earn your money, I assume. You see, you don't get that vibration when the vacuum advance is working properly. <laughs> well, you can put the tubing in now. I'll get you the seven side. Benjamin Richards. Hi. Hold on. This morning, I watched a colleague do that with a major artery. You must be the doctor that called me about that pint of blood I gave. Dr. Pierce. 
Hope you're not after another pint now. Kick her over, Joe. No, what I'd like is to ask you a few questions. All right. Uh, can we uh, have a moment in private? Is it important? Sounds better, Joe. Mr. Richards, have you ever been sick at any time in your life? You mean really sick? No major illness at all. Uh, how about uh, minor illnesses, childhood diseases, mumps, measles, chicken pox, scarlet fever? No, now that you mention it, I guess I'm one of those people that don't get sick. Think carefully, Mr. Richards. Have you never been ill? Never had any disease, major or minor? No, I don't remember any. How about flu? A cold, sore throat, cough? You're trying to say there's something wrong with me. Why don't you say it? Joe, knock it off, will you? Do forgive me. I'm terribly sorry. No, Mr. Richards, there's nothing wrong with you. On the contrary... Then why all the questions? That pint of blood you donated was received by Jordan Braddock. The Jordan Braddock? <laughs> he had to get it from somebody. Anyway, a very strange thing happened after he received your blood. He made a rather dramatic recovery, which is putting it mildly. You think I had something to do with it? I'm not certain, but... I'd like to run some tests on you at the hospital tomorrow. Take some samples of your blood. You drop by after work? Sure, why not? Thank you. Uh, for the moment, I'd like to keep this just between us. Fine. Uh, on your blood bank card, is your age entered correctly? Yeah, I think so. You're 43 years old. That's right. I kept this little fellow as a control. He and his two brothers are triplets, been with me for seven years. As you see, he doesn't respond. He's dying of old age. I gave his brother here an extract from Braddock's blood following rejuvenation. And his other brother here received an extract from the samples I took from you a week ago. Come on, fella, come on. Come on. There you go. See you do your stuff. <laughs> Look at him. I've also inoculated him with every fatal human disease a rat can contract. He's immune to all of them, like you. It's wild. Yeah, but the amazing thing is, every one of us has immunity factors in his blood. All of us. Make some of us immune to polio, some to diphtheria, and so forth, but you seem to have every immunity factor there is, sugar. Oh, uh, one, please. And I pass them on to Braddock, like a chain reaction. But where'd I get it? Some trick of nature, perhaps. Chance meeting of the right genes. Anyway, if you didn't get them from your parents, there's a spoon behind you there. I hope you don't mind. I had their hospital records checked. They were normal. Well, they were my real parents. Uh, I was adopted. In that case, it's just a chance that one of your real parents might have been like you. Well, then they uh, could be alive. Not necessarily. They could have met with an accident, been drowned, fallen from a height, any one of a number of things. Well, I have a brother somewhere, but I've never seen him. He may or may not be like you. But we're talking about you now, Ben. You're immune to another very common disease of mankind, a disease we call old age. Oh, come on. Man, don't you ever look at yourself in the mirror? You're 43 years old, and you could pass for 30. You're going to stay that way for a very long time. Well, how long? I don't know. I don't, really. Well, do you have any idea, Doctor? I can only guess, but 
Roughly, it could be anywhere from five to ten normal lifetimes. Come on, fella, come on. As far as present standards of life expectancy are concerned, you're almost immortal. Understand anything. Ben. Oh, but Ben. Hey, I didn't tell you I was going to die tomorrow. I know. I'm going to be alive for a long time. I know, I know, I know. Are you putting me on? Because if you're not, if you're serious. Oh, oh baby. <laughs> oh. It's the truth. And you're really going to stay just this way. That's what Dr. Pierce said. <laughs> like my mother. I'm gonna look like your mother. No, no, no. You didn't understand me. We're both gonna be the same way. We're both gonna live oh. for a long time. Both. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna have the longest and greatest marriage this world has ever seen. One transfusion for me. Voila. 2,000-year-old <laughs> man. Meet the 2,000-year-old woman. Oh, I can pass it on to you. There's a chance you can pass it on to somebody else, and that somebody else can pass it on to somebody else, and I can't explain it to you scientifically. You're going to have to come down to the hospital, talk to Dr. Pierce, and see for yourself. It can really be passed on. It looks that way so far. That's great. You know, when I left his lab, I went by this ward. It was full of kids, the saddest bunch of kids you ever seen in your life. They're all terminal cases. They're all going to die. I wanted to run in there and tell them, hey, kids, hang on. Maybe I can help you. And you know... Maybe I can. Well, what about it? You want to spend a few hundred years with me? I don't know. They said the first hundred are the hardest. What about children? Chances are they're going to be like me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can't you see? <laughs> Mrs. Jones. I'd like you to meet my uh, son and daughter. He's 193. She's 194. And I am 216. And them eight pounds, Mrs. Jones. No, sir. <laughs> oh, Ben, it sounds scary. <laughs> well, Doctor, how am I doing? Better than you deserve. You can leave the hospital today. Good. Dr. Pierce, you've saved my life. I want you to know how grateful I am. I'm a new man. Aren't I, my darling? Yes, yes, my darling. Dr. Pierce, I am preparing to endow a research chair of medicine at the university in your name. The endowment will be $12 million, more if you need it, more. What you have to do is agree to. Uh, careful now, my love. Uh, thank you. What you have to agree to is to provide me with the same treatment, if necessary, the same treatment that saved my life. I'll think about it. Don't think too long, Doctor. That feeling I had uh, inside of me, that feeling of electricity, it's gone. I want it back, Doctor. I wanted you to see for yourself. This is the fellow that received an extract from Braddock's blood. He's become old again. And... Your rat is losing vitality, too. See that? Look at that. So it doesn't last. Well, what about Braddock? He's complaining about having lost the, quote, electricity, unquote. Which means you have to make an important choice, Ben. Braddock is anxious to set up a research project on this. But for your sake, I'm against the idea. Why? It sounds like a good one. It did when we thought a chain reaction was possible. 
each person passing on the immunity factors to the next. But now we know you're the only source, you alone. If word of your existence were to leak out, your life would be over. Don't you see? You're a walking fountain of youth. If men knew you existed, they'd fight over you like dogs over a bone. Well, what could they do to me? Take away your freedom, for one thing. You can give blood 20 times a year. Out of the billions of people in the world, you can save only 20. Everyone, at least every powerful figure in the world, would scheme to get his hands on you. You'd have to be kept in protective custody from now on. My advice to you is to run, you and your fiance. Lose yourself somewhere before Braddock and everyone else learns about you. You're a doctor and you tell me this, knowing what it could mean to people. I know the lengths to which people will go to hold on to life. Believe me, I'm even tempted to make use of you myself. What if we could keep my identity a secret? Braddock would be paying for it, he'd have to know. You have no idea what that man's capable of. If he had to put you in a cage like one of those guinea pigs to stay alive, he'd do it without a flicker. Why not? <laughs> Gods make their own rules. I've destroyed your blood bank records. For your own sake, Ben, let's leave it at that. Braddock's willing to pay for research. I'd like to go along with it. What for? Out of some misguided impulse to cure the ills of mankind? Maybe. I don't know. You know, when you first told me about this, it sounded great. Now it sounds like we get, get lonely. You know, uh, looking for new friends every 20 years or so. I'd like to get started as soon as possible. All right. I'll set up a meeting for you for some time in the next few days. You can be sure that by that time, Braddock will know everything about you. Your private life, your job at the plant, everything. If you expect to find him grateful or even friendly, don't. He sees people as objects. To see you simply as a more valuable object than most. Something I should set up such a foundation, you would agree to make yourself available for further study. You would donate blood once a month, which the Foundation would use as it sees fit. Which Dr. Pierce would use as he sees fit. Suppose, in charge. Uh, suppose, Mr. Richards, I should want a transfusion if I must ask Dr. Pierce exactly what am I getting for my money? Hmm? Oh, I am interested in mankind, of course, but I would like my needs taken care of. Sit down, Mr. Richards. Mr. Richards, I want to live. I don't want Dr. Pierce or anyone else saying whether I am entitled to. I'm sure you'll be able to work that out with the doctor. I would prefer to work it out right now. Excuse me, sir, but I'd prefer it left up to the doctor. Mr. Richards, you haven't said yet what you expect out of this personally. Personally? Personally. Well, I, uh, I haven't thought about it. You... Intend to go on being a test driver. Mm -hmm. Why not? Because it's out of the question. I'm alive, thanks to you, Mr. Richards. My remaining alive may one day depend on you. I think I should have something to say about the manner in which you live. Mr. Braddock. Let's get one thing straight. If I don't work for you, I'm going to work for somebody else. But I'm going to go on doing what I always have. Yes. Yes, of course, of course. You're absolutely right, Mr. Richards. Your life is your own. Yes, you please, uh, please forgive the impatience of an old man. I would like to see to it, though, that you have a better job and a, a better salary, of course, than you have at present. Well, it's like I told you. I'm a test driver. Yes, of course, whatever you say, Mr. Richards. Well, goodbye for now. I hope this is the beginning of a very long relationship. Good day, sir. <laughs> Don't 
tell me I'm imagining it. I'm getting older. I can see it. I can feel it. Look, that, that, that line right there, that wasn't there a couple of weeks ago. I know it. Don't lie to me, Pierce. I'm getting older, aren't I? Aren't we all? Don't play games with me. Answer me. Yes, you're getting older. Now, quickly. Roughly, I'd say about a year for each month. I thought I had another 20 years. Now you tell me 20 months. The rejuvenation is only temporary. The result of the factors in Richard's blood being diluted in yours. You can't manufacture new factors. Nobody can, except Ben Richards. In the meantime, he's walking around just like anyone else. Why shouldn't he? You idiot! Do you realize what you're saying? What do you think he is? Some kind of a... Get away from me! Some kind of a superman. He could cross the street and be crushed by a truck. But as if he isn't killed by that fool job of his first... Uh, way of life's his own concern? It's our concern. What if I need a transfusion a month from now, a year from now, and he's been in an accident? Uh, he should have limits put on him. For example? Whatever limits are necessary. He's entitled to live his own life. Yes, he's yes, entitled yes. to protection. Suppose somebody else finds out about him. Kidnaps him. Have you thought about that? Thought about what men would pay just to get their hands on him? Whatever men will pay for life. I'd pay a hundred million a year if I had to. More. Pierce. Yes, I suggest that you have a talk with him about moving somewhere out of the city, somewhere isolated where he can be guarded. We'll plan out a whole new life for him. I tell you right now, he'll never agree to such a thing. I guess there's nothing we can do about it, is there? Any idea what it's about? Mr. Richards. Mr. Braddock doesn't tell people what he wants to see them about. He just says, come now, and they come. Well, follow me in your car, and we'll be in his house in 20 minutes. Give me a chance to get out of this monkey suit. Sure. Mr. Braddock's way. We're not using the front door, huh? No. We're meeting down there. Après vous, monsieur. Get his tie and his belt. Anything else he might harm himself with. See you upstairs, fellas.
For your further protection, Mr. Richards, we've bolted all the furniture down to the floor, including the ashtrays. Noticed above you are television surveillance cameras. And this. For your uh, bedding accommodation. For the further development of your mind. Relax, Mr. Richards, relax. Consider yourself fortunate, Mr. Richards. Somebody would have done this to you sooner or later. Even the U.S. government. If you're at all familiar with bureaucracy, you'll know what I've saved you from. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Rest assured, Mr. Richards, these quarters are only temporary. We've already started work on much finer ones, and when they're completed, you'll be moved. Believe me, Richard, you'll have a better life than any man ever dreamed of. Uh, you'll be provided with the most beautiful women in the world. You'll be pampered, waited on, given everything. Everything but my freedom. What happens when people start looking for me? Oh, but they won't, Mr. Richards, they won't. I've already arranged that. I came over as soon as I could, Sylvia. What happened? It's bad, Dr. Pierce. He's dead. He's dead. This morning's paper. Perfectly dreadful thing, Dr. Pierce. Terrible, just. Just terrible. It was even more terrible for his fiance. I was with her early this morning. Right after she got work, they pulled the car out of the water. They're still dragging the river for his body. Uh, they haven't found him yet, eh? No, they won't find him. You and I both know that, don't we? How dare you? How dare you do such a thing? You won't get away with it. Even you can't kidnap a human being with impunity. Dr. Pierce, I'm going to overlook what you say because I know you're upset, but I think you should learn to control yourself. <laughs> Not more than a week ago, you were trembling at the very thought of Richard's death. Now do you expect me to believe you can accept it so calmly? You've had him taken somewhere. Oh. Excuse me. Shall I leave again? No, no, not at all, my dear. Come right on in. Come on. As a matter of fact, I, I think you should hear this. The good doctor is accusing me of having kidnapped the man. Oh, anyone I know? A test driver at one of my own plans, no less. A man with miraculous, life-giving powers. Magic blood, no less. One sip of it and you're three days old again. You've got to release Ben Richards. What do you think of such a story, Janet? I think I'm going to get some sun. I'll tell you what I think, Doctor. I think you've been my physician for too long. Why don't you just send me a bill and don't come back? This doesn't end here. I'll go to the police if I have to. Yes, yes. Why don't you do that? If they won't listen, why don't you go to the district attorney? Before you do, Pierce, make sure you take along some concrete evidence. And one more thing. I, I wouldn't tell them the motive if I were you. You see, if they should believe you and then Richards turns up, you, you've doomed him, haven't you? Think about it.
You're not doing yourself any good just moping around day after day. Now, this is what you ought to be doing. Keep it in shape. Now, here's a great one for the biceps, Mr. Richards. You watching, Mr. Richards? Oh, boy. I suppose you did get by me. You still have to get up that elevator and pass the two guards. Hey, here comes our breakfast. Have you seen the evening paper? You've been declared officially dead. The old fool Pierce actually went to the authorities for all the good it did him. As rich as if it'll make you feel any better, you'll be moved within the month. You'll have plenty of fresh air and sunlight then. Perhaps in a few days you'll be able to spare another pint of that precious blood of yours. I'm very curious to see if I gain another 20 years. You'll have a time getting it out of me. Be put to sleep, you won't even be aware when it happens. Just so something like you can keep on living. Oh, much more I've given this a lot of thought, Mr. Richards. I've even started a search for your brother. My brother? Yes, yes, I know all about you, you see. And assuming your brother is anything like you, I, I intend to use him and you to save cream of mankind to save the best minds, keep alive the best scientists and statesmen, the best businessmen. Well, if there are many, your choice. I hate to see it happen. Why? Braddock, I swear to you, if I ever get my hands on you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you won't, Mr. Richards. You won't get your hands on me. Somehow. Someday you'll make a mistake. And I'll get out of here. I'll get out of here. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? your favorite today? Pea soup. What a crime. 
It says here the American people spend six billion dollars a year on drugs. And you know why? Because they don't eat properly, just like you. You are what you eat is an old saying, but it's still as true as ever. It's not your fault, Doctor. I mean, you told him. You tried to warn him. I tried to dissuade him, yes, but not enough. Really, down deep, I wanted to see the Braddock Research Foundation set up. I wanted... Hello? Sylvia, I don't have much time, so I have to make this fast. Ben, Ben! Oh, Sylvia, please oh, just ben, listen Dr. to me. I Dr. don't Dr. have any time. He was, he kept saying Honey, he will you please listen to me? I wanted so much to believe. Oh, Ben. Ben, Ben, where are you? I'm near the airport. My plane leaves in a few minutes, but I had to let you know that I was okay. I gotta get out of town. I gotta get out and stay out. Though Braddock's dead. I understand. Where are you going? Los Angeles. I can get the next plane. If I can meet you there. Please, Ben, please. No, no, you can't come with me. We can't take the chance. If I had any sense, I'd, I'd tell you to forget about me. I love you. I've been worried sick about you. I know, I know, honey. Look, if you won't let me come with you, please write and let me know where you are. All right, all right, all right. I'll write to you and carry general delivery. Take care of yourself, Ben. Goodbye, sweetheart. I'm beginning to understand what it's like to be alone. Completely alone. 
I try as much as possible to go out only at night. Then I stay away from places where I might be spotted. If I know Braddock, he won't give up. The only thing that keeps me going is knowing that sooner or later he's gonna die. Then maybe, maybe you and I can start another life together, somewhere. It seems like you've been gone years, darling, instead of months. Like you, I'm alone most of the time. Dr. Pierce comes by occasionally, but I really think it's just to keep me company. He's a beaten man, darling. He still feels that everything that happened was his fault. Please, sweetheart, I want to see you so badly. Won't you let me? If only for a day, a few hours. I'll be very careful. I don't even keep your letters. I read them four or five times, and then I burn them. Sylvia? If you hear someone start to cry, it's me. Oh, bad. And I miss you so. I've missed you too, hon. Are you all right? I'm fine. Everything's fine, except you're not here. Braddock, has he bothered you? He doesn't even know I'm alive. He knows. Are you sure? I keep searching for uh, listening devices and looking over my shoulder to see if anybody's following me. There's nothing. He won't overlook you, Sylvia. But wouldn't I have seen somebody? Not if they don't want you to. Oh, Ben. And how much longer are we going to go on like this? As long as we have to. Baby, I've got to see you. Sylvia, don't you think I want to see you? But we can't take the chance. If we were careful, if I made sure that no one, no one followed me. Let me think about it. Please, man. Please. All right, we'll wait a couple more months, then we'll see. If they are watching, maybe by then they'll be convinced that we're not in touch with each other. But you still have to be very, very careful. Under no circumstances can you give them any indication that you're taking a trip. And remember, don't even pack an overnight case. When you leave the house, it should look as though you're simply going out as usual. Make a plane reservation in advance under another name, but be careful going to the airport. Have the cab drive around for a while so you can make sure you're not being followed. 254 to San Francisco, Portland, and Seattle. Now boarding at gate 9. If you could only cook. Do you really want to get something to eat? Well, it was your idea. I changed my mind. Hmm? Well, now I'm hungry. Me too. I mean food hungry. Hmm. Uh, I just lost my appetite. You really want to go get something to eat? That's what I asked you. What did I say? You said you were hungry. Hmm. I lied.
All right. We'll get something to eat. But we shall return. Oh, I look awful. You look beautiful. Come oh, on. I was hoping you'd say that. throw water bags down those things when I was a kid. I still do. As a matter of fact, you ought to see how many times I've been... Mm. I know those. Come on. Mm. Who's there? I'm a neighbor. I live downstairs. I need some help badly. Please let me in. I don't know you, mister. I can't. I need help. I'm with a woman and a couple of men after us. Mister, I got a wife and a kid here. I ain't taking any chances. Then will you at least call the police? Then they call the police, honey. Give me one of those boards. Braddock wants me, don't you? Then come and get me. And take a chance I go over. And if I do, you've had it. Make your move. We better get out of here. We all get out of here together or she gets it. He's bluffing, Ben. The police are gonna be here any minute. Go ahead. Shoot. Lady. Go ahead. Sylvia, don't! What do they want? I don't know, Lieutenant. In case you've forgotten, buddy, there's a girl dying in there. Look, fella, I want to help you out. I mean that. But I can if you won't tell me the truth. Mr. Richards, I have to be frank with you. I don't think she's going to make it. You keep giving her blood, she keeps losing it. She's gone into shock. All right, then, let's give her my blood. I beg your pardon? Just give her my blood, doctor. <laughs> Forgive me. I, I, when your fiancé was conscious a while ago, she said some very strange things. She, Pleaded for a transfusion of your blood. She seemed to feel it had some remarkable healing power. Naturally, I assume she was How long will delirious. Take well, we'd have to run a match test first, and then compatibility tests. Take at least Let's an start hour. Let's
Look, I know how you feel, but try to look at it my way. I got a job to do. I can't hang around here all day. Just a few minutes more, Lieutenant. All right, make it five. Then we head downtown. Uh, Lieutenant. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here with him now. You leave in a few minutes. What do you mean? The guy was involved in a gun brawl. No, no, I'm not going to book him. I just want to ask him a few questions. Yeah. Okay. Well, they told me to let you go. Someone downtown's pulling strings for you. Oh, buddy, you're free. Yeah, I'm free. Such a pretty girl. You know, in this light, it almost looks as though her color's coming back. She does have more color. Stronger, much stronger. Dad. It's all right, Miss Cartwright. Shh, it's all right. Don't worry, you're safe. Mr. Richards, ordinarily I'd hesitate to make a statement like this, but I think she's going to be all right. A few minutes ago, the hemorrhaging stopped just like that. Blood pressure is still low, but the heartbeat is regular. I don't know. It's I don't know what to call it. It's like some force is speeding up the healing process. <laughs> she's even awake now. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, uh, Mr. Richards. Uh, I wonder if maybe you'd come in in a few days and let us run some tests on you? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Hey. Don't look at me. I'm so ashamed. was dying. I was scared. I didn't care what happened to you. I didn't know. No, forget. I told. I told the doctor about it's you. Okay. It's okay. Now he knows. <laughs> you see? You can't trust anybody. Not even me. I'm so afraid. I'm just afraid. Oh, afraid. I think you'd better get in.
once, thanks to me. Couldn't you stay away? How'd you know I was here? I listened in on my husband's conversations. to be road tested. You want to get out? Can you make it? I've never tried it. Let's go. You didn't care if we got killed back there, did you? What happens to you? I wait. I hope I don't have to wait too long. You afraid of being uh, disinherited? It's all in a trust fund. You've got him. No, I lost him. Mr. Locke, if you're not joking, you'd better start looking for another job. I'm not joking, Mr. Pratty. As for the job, I'm putting in for a raise. Otherwise, you see, I might just decide to go after him on my own. And uh, speaking of jokes, here's one for you. Your wife is the one who helped him get away. Both times. See you back at the ranch, Mr. Pratty.
I've thought this over very carefully, Sylvia. I love you, and I'll always think about you. But I want you to forget me. Even if Braddock wasn't after me, there'd be others now. That doctor who took care of you, he was asking questions. By this time, he knows the truth. Braddock's right-hand man knows about me, too, and Braddock's wife knows. It's only a matter of time before other people find out. Dr. Pierce was right. I've got to run far and fast. While I'm doing it, I'm going to try to find my brother. Wherever he is, he's got to be warned. Warned that Braddock is looking for him, waiting to throw him in a cage and drain him dry. Whatever happens to me finally, Sylvia, wherever I go, I want you to know I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you for as long as I live. Flight 27 is now loading at gate 43. Flight 27 is now loading at gate 43.